Uh, in this lecture, we shall be talking about some basic concepts of microprocessors, microcomputers and microcontrollers, because these are the brain or the processing power behind any embedded system that we see around us. So, it is always good to know what are the main differences between these, uh, these things. So, the topic of the lecture as you can see is microprocessors and microcontrollers. So, these are uh, the concepts that will be covered as part of this lecture. We shall be talking about some classification of computer architectures followed by the main characteristic features of microprocessors and microcontrollers. Okay. So, let us start with how a computer system works basically. Now, with respect to a computer system, so you may be knowing that there is something called central processing unit or CPU that carries out all computations or calculations. So, you can see this schematic diagram, the CPU is sitting in the middle and there are some memory where program and the data are stored. So, what the CPU does? It fetches instructions from the program memory one by one, it fetches the instructions, executes them and during execution it may require to transfer some data between the data memory, either reading a data or writing the data back into the data memory. Okay. Now, in addition to processing, the computer system often needs to interface or communicate with the so called outside world. The outside world is typically the user who is using a computer system for conventional systems like a desktop or a laptop. right? So, the input output subsystem this allows users to interact with the computing system. Now, I have already mentioned when you talk about embedded systems, here the way the processor interacts with the outside world, the outside world may not always be a human being, may not be a user, it may be environment, it senses some temperature, pressure, humidity, some parameters of the environment, those will be the inputs. And similarly, it can take some corrective action like it can turn on a heater, turn on the compressor and so on. Okay. These are the output devices. Okay. Talking about the instruction set architectures, this is one way in which you can classify computer systems. What kind of instructions? the CPU is capable of executing. Depending upon the broad classification with respect to instruction sets, we can classify computers as either a CISC architecture or a RISC architecture. CISC is the short form for complex instruction set computer. Now, the most common example of such CISC architectures are the Intel classes of processors which dominate the desktop, laptop and serv server markets. More than 90 percent of the processors inside are made by Intel or some clones of those made by Intel. These are called complex instruction set computers. The instruction can be fairly complex with lot of flexibilities and features. There is another philosophy called reduced instruction set computers. Here, the instruction set is made very simple. Because they are simple, it is much easier to implement the computer system in hardware. So, in some sense it becomes more efficient with respect to execution of the instructions. So, most of the microcontrollers that we see today, they are based on the RISC architecture because of primarily this reason. They are easy to implement, they are very simple. Okay. Now, not only microcontrollers, let me also tell you, most of the modern processors at some level, they are based on the RISC philosophy of instruction execution, because it makes the instruction execution unit much more efficient. Okay? So, even the Intel processors I am talking about, those are based on CISC, internally 
this complex instructions are broken up into simpler instructions or micro instructions you can call they look more like a risk instruction set which are then executed efficiently using a controller. Talking about the memory system, broadly speaking there can be two kinds of memory. One which is called random access memory, where you can both read and write and the other is read only memory, where you store something permanently you can only read from there. Okay. Random access memories are typically volatile. Volatile means they retain the values which you are storing only during the time the power is switched on. As soon as you switch off the power, the data gets lost. And these are used well, here we are more interested in microcontrollers because they form the heart of embedded systems. So, for microcontroller, these RAMs are typically used to store data as the data memory. But when you are talking about program memory, the place where you are storing a program, this memory is typically non volatile, which means because it is a ROM read only memory, once you store it, even if you switch off the power, the program will not get destroyed. So, so in most microcontrollers, there is an area of program memory which is implemented using ROM, but nowadays there are microcontrollers which use some alternate technologies, let us say like flash memory, which is also non volatile, where you can store some program, you can also change the program if you want, but if you switch off the power, the program does not get destroyed. Okay. Fine. Broadly with respect to CPU architectures, we are so far talking about instruction set architectures. Now, talking about how the CPU works, there is a broad classification here also, we talk about von Neumann and Harvard class of architectures. The basic difference is that in the von Neumann architecture, we have a single memory, both instructions and data they are stored in the same memory. Most of the conventional computer systems that you see around us, they are based on von Neumann architecture. Okay. But in Harvard architecture, here conceptually there are two separate memories. Uh, in one of the memory you store the program, in another memory you store the data. Most of the microcontrollers, they follow this principle. They have separate memories. right? So, instructions are typically stored as I said in a read only memory, while data are stored in a random access memory. There are two different types of memories. Pictorially, von Neumann and Harvard architectures can be shown like this. In a von Neumann architecture as you can uh, see here, the data and program memory although you are showing them as separate, but CPU is accessing them over the same data bus using the same address. So, with respect to CPU, it appears that the memory is the same, but in practice we may store them separately in separate parts as this diagram shows, program is here, data is here, but with respect to the CPU, the way the addresses are generated they are unified. Same address and data lines are used to transfer program as well as data. And input output devices are also typically connected through the same bus. This is how typical von Neumann architectures look like. Of course, there are sophisticated architectures where there can be multiple buses for parallel transfer of data and so on, but I am talking about the conventional concept. Okay. Now, in Harvard architecture, here you see there is separate data and program memories and the address and data buses are entirely separate. 
So, while you are transferring program, you are fetching a program in parallel you can also fetch or write some data into data memory. And in some architectures the input output devices are also connected via separate address and data buses. So, this is the general form of Harvard architecture. The drawback is that you need so many buses, lot of input output pins to interface the external devices, but the advantage is that you get on the average faster and parallel data transfer features. Let us now come to a microprocessor. What is a microprocessor? Well, you have seen what is a CPU. Microprocessor is a general term which means a CPU fabricated within a single integrated circuit or IC chip. With the advancement in semiconductor technology, earlier CPU circuits were very large and bulky, they have started to become smaller, smaller and smaller and now they can fit inside a single chip. Nowadays for example, if you look at the Pentium CPU chip, there are close to billions of basic components or transistors inside the chip, they are huge in size. Okay? So, inside the microprocessor what are the things that are typically there? There are a set of registers, some are general purpose, some are special purpose which are used for temporary storage of data. There is an arithmetic and logic unit where all the data processing are carried out both arithmetic operations and also logical operations and there is some mechanism for interfacing memory and I O devices. There are some external bus and control mechanism through which you can connect memory or I O devices with the microprocessor right. And of course, there is a control unit which can be considered as the brain of the system which controls the entire operation of the microprocessor. It synchronizes all internal operations. Okay. This is what a microprocessor basically is. So, schematically you can see these are the main components. You can see the registers here, you can see the arithmetic and logic unit, you can see the control unit and externally there are some buses, address and data bus and there can be control bus. Address and data buses will be used to interface with external memory and I O devices and the control bus will contain other signals like read, write, enable, different kinds of interrupts and other things. Okay. Some signals for interfacing slow memories, there are many such miscellaneous signals which are used for control purposes. They will be part of the control bus. Okay. Now, starting from microprocessor, let us now see next step what is a microcomputer. Microcomputer is a computer which is built around a microprocessor. You look at our desktop, you look at our laptop, there is a Pentium, we talk about um, Intel i3, i5, i7 class of processors inside our modern desktops and laptops they are essentially microprocessors and inside a desktop or a laptop it is not only the microprocessors there are memories there are other devices there is a disk drive there are some some other interfaces to connect keyboard and mouse for example printers that makes your entire computer this is a microcomputer what you call it is a computer system built using a microprocessor. Okay. Now, microprocessor as I said it contains basically some registers and arithmetic logic circuits and control. It does not contain any memory or any facility for input output. So, to make a real computer system we have to interface all of these devices with the microprocessor. right? But the trouble with a microcomputer is that since you have to interface so many things around a microprocessor, your system becomes complex, bulky and also expensive. In addition, it also consumes significantly higher power. 
So, it is fine if you use it for a high performance application like a desktop or a laptop, but not for embedded system application where ultra low power portability small size these features are quite essential. So, a microcomputer as you can see this is built around a microprocessor you have memory you have I O ports and through this I O ports you can interface with several I O devices. This is what a microcomputer is. Now, let us come to microcontrollers, which are the heart of embedded systems. What is a microcontroller? Well, microcomputer, we have said it is a computer system built around a microprocessor. Now, what if the whole of the microcomputer we can shrink? and put inside a single chip. All the essential elements of a computer system I put inside a single chip. Of course, since I am putting everything inside one chip, I cannot have equivalent functionalities as compared to what I have in a desktop or laptop. For example, I cannot have 4 gigabytes of memory example. Okay. Since I am putting everything on a single chip, the total chip area has to be shared by processor, memory, I O everything, right. So, it is basically microcontroller a computer on a single chip. Because it is on a single chip, it is relatively very low cost, inexpensive. It is small, it also consumes quite low power, very low power in fact. And these are very widely used in embedded system design right. Now, if you look at the schematic of this microcontroller, what are the typical things which are present? You will see that uh, well you have the CPU inside the here is your CPU registers ALUs and control this constitutes your central processing unit. There is some memory of course, you cannot have very large memory some memory is there small in size. There can be some facility for connecting input output devices. There are some timers and counters which are required for many applications. There are interrupt circuits and there are many other facilities there can be some analog ports. Most of the signals that are coming from the outside world they are continuous or analog in nature they are not digital. So, if we have some kind of analog to digital converter built into the system into the chip it becomes very convenient to interface such devices. Typically, all those facilities are provided inside the chip directly. Okay. So, as you can see microcontrollers typically operate on data that are fed through some input ports data are coming from outside these are the ports and there is a program which is running stored in memory whatever calculation is going on that is controlled by that program. Okay. And as I said typically they have analog pins, timers, counters and other utility circuitry. For example, you can have a pulse width modulation circuit which is very useful as we shall see later. Okay. So, this is a slightly more detailed diagram of a microcontroller. So, you can see you have the basic microprocessor here register ALU and the control. There is some program memory a memory to store the program. There is a memory to store your data RAM and there can be some input output pins as you can see some of the input output can be digital some may be analog there will be counters and timers and there can be sophisticated kind of interface also like serial I O interfaces, pulse width modulated interfaces, interrupt driven I O and so on and so forth. So, all these facilities are provided in typical microcontrollers today. So, that you can use it for almost any kind of embedded system applications. Okay. In addition you have the power supply reset interrupts clocks these are standard signals. microcontroller packaging and appearance you can see these are some 
typical microcontroller which are manufactured by a company called PIC, PIC microcontrollers. Now, in comparison, you see one of the older microprocessors Motorola 68000, this was a 48 pin chip, so large in size. So, in comparison, the smallest PIC processor is so small, it is a fraction of the size of a coin as you can see. So, this becomes very small, so that in very small embedded system applications, you can use these kind of processors very conveniently. This is the main advantage I is talking about. Now, microcontrollers are computers in their own right, PCs are also computers built around a microprocessor. So, what are the main differences? There are still some differences. You see, when a PC executes a program, from where does the program come from? They are initially stored either in the hard disk or in the modern day systems we have something called solid state drive based on flash memory technology. So, you can have hard disk or SSD, from there the program gets loaded into memory and from memory the instructions are executed one by one. This is how a typical or conventional computer system work. right? And there is an operating system, you know of Windows, you know of Linux, they are fairly complicated program. They are responsible for handling all low level operations while the program is getting executed. Whenever there is an input output operation, it is the operating system, the drivers therein who will be invoked or called, it will take care of the IO operations. Okay? But in a microcontroller, it is a very small system. So, you cannot afford to have a disk, there is no disk, everything will be inside that microcontroller itself, program, the whatever program is running. See, in a computer system, it is general, you can load any program you want from the disk and run it, but a microcontroller that is sitting inside an AC machine, that will only run that program which is meant for controlling the AC machine, right. So, it is like that. So, in a typical microcontroller, there is a small ROM inside the chip, this will be storing the program, fixed program, the program cannot be changed, right. And of course, the point to note is that the maximum size of the ROM that is provided there, that limits the size and complexity of the program that you can run on the microcontroller. Okay. And there is no operating system. Whenever you reset or power on your system, the program which is stored in the ROM that starts running, that is the only program, there is no operating system. So, these are broadly the main differences between a microcontroller and a normal computing system like the PC. Microcontrollers are used in applications where processing power is not critical, you do not need very high processing power, rather you need low power, small size, low cost, these kind of attributes. right? So, you typically find many such devices in modern day households, whatever equipment you purchase, you deploy and install, there will be some embedded microcontroller inside it. right? So, there are many applications I, I already talked about these earlier in office automation segment, consumer electronics, in automotive, in vehicles, in aeroplanes, in rockets, missiles, everywhere communication, you will find these devices everywhere. Now, talking about evolution, since the 1970s, the first generation of microcontroller started to evolve. There was one microcontroller which was developed by Intel, it was 8051, it is still being used, but talking about the power, the flexibility and the innovativeness, well 8051 is rather a old kind of an architecture, it does not have too much flexibility. Right? Starting from mid 80s, and the process is continuing. Now, what we see now is that microcontrollers are all right, now they are getting embedded inside larger 
chips these are called application specific integrated circuit. Like one of the microcontroller that we shall be demonstrating as part of this course, this uh, microcontroller board which is from ST microelectronics STM, it has something called ARM Cortex M4 chip inside. Now, ARM Cortex M4 is not only the ARM processor, not only a microcontroller, but lot of other things all integrated in the same chip. So, now you are going one step further, not only a microcontroller, but many other things you are putting or integrating inside the same chip that is the present day trend. So, to summarize the advantages of microcontrollers are they are fast, they are effective from the point of view of solving some particular application at hand. You are talking about the AC machine, the microcontroller inside is powerful enough to do the necessary processing there. Okay. It must be low cost because if it is of a higher cost, it also increases the cost of the product. It must consume low power, so your, your electric bill should not take a hit right? and compatibility. Compatibility is very important. Typically, you will find that this microcontrollers are coming from certain companies or certain certain uh, you can say th these are called family of microcontrollers, PIC, ARM these are some typical examples. Now, if you look at the microcontrollers across the family, they are all instruction set compatible, most of the instructions are compatible. So, that once you develop a software for one member of the family, when you move to a better processor, the same code can run or execute without change or with very little modification. Right? This is called compatibility which is very important with respect to maintainability. So, with this we come to the end of this lecture. Uh, in the next lecture, from the next lecture we shall be starting some discussion on how we can make processing faster with particular regard to the ARM family of microcontrollers. We shall specifically see what are the features that are inside the ARM family of microcontrollers and why they are different, why are they standing out, why people are using them so much, so widely. So, this we shall be discussing in our subsequent lectures. Thank you.